seven Spanish angels took another angel home. Hey, I'm Willie Nelson. You're watching Hip Rock TV. We don't run, and we don't compromise, we don't quit, we never do. Hello again, neighbors. I'm Master Sergeant Tony Vance, the voice of Freedom's Voice. Tonight, oh, pardon me. We'll talk about pardons. President Trump as president, has the power to pardon people who have been convicted of breaking federal law. He has misused this power to help people who got in trouble while working on his election. He has signaled to his cronies in trouble that if they protect him, a pardon could be in the offing. As bad as this misuse of power is, the president is not the only leader with pardoning power. State governors also have executive pardoning power with the ability to pardon those who have broken state law. Many are using this power not only to pardon, but to apologize. With the end of cannabis prohibition in more than half the states, many governors and state legislatures have begun to pardon and expunge the records of those convicted under the unjust laws supporting cannabis prohibition. We know now that the original law prohibiting the use of cannabis was an unjust and racist law that was declared unconstitutional in 1969, with much thanks to Dr. Timothy Leary. The number of people who have had their lives damaged between 1937 and 1969 by this unjust law is hard to estimate. The law replacing it, the 1970 Controlled Substances Act, which scheduled drugs by their harm, placed cannabis in Schedule I, dangerous and having no medical value, along with heroin. This alone seems strange, as heroin is essentially the same thing as morphine, which is classified as Schedule II. Cannabis is scheduling was supposed to be temporary. They were awaiting the results of the Schaefer Commission appointed by uh, President Nixon and their report, Drugs in America. They reported that cannabis should be decriminalized and that uh, drug use was a medical problem and not a criminal one. President Nixon, we now know, decided to ignore the recommendations of his own commission and declared the war on drugs. He wanted to use the war to harass his political enemies. John Ehrlichman, a Nixon aide, ad admitted in a 1993 interview that that was the plan. He said, the Nixon campaign and the Nixon White House had two enemies, blacks and anti-war protesters. We couldn't make it against the law to be black or against the war, but if we could associate the blacks with heroin and the anti-war protesters in marijuana, criminalize them heavily, we could arrest their leaders, break up their meetings, and vilify them night after night on the television. Did we know we were lying about the drugs? Of course we were. There you have it. One wonders, just simply wonders, how many lives, how many of our citizens have had their lives ruined behind this political scam? The records show from 1969 to 1995 an average of 400,000 arrests per year for an estimated total of 10,400,000 arrests for that period. From 1996 to the present, we see an uptick 
to an average of 750,000 arrests per year for an estimated total of 18 million arrests. Millions of lives upended by this scam. Now, governors in the states that have legalized have begun to undo some of this damage. The Colorado governor, as has the Michigan governor, recently have pardoned and expunged the records of their citizens damaged by this law. These pardons and expungements, though, are a drop in the bucket of repairing the actual damage done. Sadly, on the federal level and in some states, it is still being used to unjustly destroy the lives of our citizens. When the federal prohibition of cannabis finally ends, the president should not only pardon those currently in prison or on record as having been arrested, but he or she should, as should all state governors, also issue a blanket pardon to reverse every cannabis conviction from 1937 to the present. It may only be a token gesture, but it should be done. Additionally, it might be a good idea to attach an apology to the blanket pardon. Eighty years of lies and false propaganda destroying millions of American lives certainly deserves an apology. And it's long overdue. There you go. See you next time. Hi, I'm Willie Nelson, and the Willie Nelson Teapot Party and I endorse Veterans for Medical Cannabis Access. Just roll me up and smoke me when I die.